Hi, this is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California. Today I'm going to get a few of you angry, so I ask that you listen to the whole broadcast and give me a fair hearing. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 16, Solomon said, I saw under the sun, in the place of judgment, wickedness was there, and in the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. In this portion of scripture, Solomon states that as he has considered life in general, often people who are in authority do not dispense proper judgments. Instead of righteousness and justice, Solomon made it very clear that he had seen wickedness prevailing over the innocent. This is something that is noted in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 14, when Isaiah writes, justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off, for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. If we take a moment to consider current political conditions, I cannot help but see that Solomon's observation remains correct. In the place of judgment, wickedness is there, and in the place of righteousness, iniquity is there. In the current case of Supreme Court nominee Judge Brett Kavanaugh, this kind of wickedness seems to be playing itself out before the eyes of any who might be interested enough to watch. An accusation has been made against him that is intended to derail his ascending to a seat on the Supreme Court of the United States. It hinges on an alleged assault that he is being accused of that would have occurred if it did when he was 17 years old. There's no proof that this actually took place. There are at this time no eyewitnesses and this is something that could have and should have been brought to light years ago if it indeed happened. And is also something that could have been brought to light during the current process of confirmation hearings. But it wasn't. The question has to be asked, why was it not brought out sooner? The answer that is being supplied for gullible Americans to buy into is that our noble-hearted, women-protecting senators withheld her name to save her from public shame and any repercussions such a disclosure might produce, and not because they feared that Kavanaugh would be confirmed, thus giving conservatives a majority on the court. I'm sorry, but I cannot and simply will not believe that these people who believe in infanticide and sexual license have suddenly developed morals that protect women. Suddenly, Democrats are ready to believe everything that women say and accusations are to be regarded as facts because a woman made them and not because they are true or not true. I still remember the reports of President John F. Kennedy's many affairs though they were not openly disclosed during his presidency. I remember his brother Robert also being known as a man who had affairs, not to mention Teddy Kennedy's infamous abandoning of Mary Jo Kopechny after he drove off of a bridge in Chappaquiddick. He later was recognized as a champion of women's rights, but where was the outrage then? Do any of you remember Paula Jones, Juanita Broderick, or Jennifer Flowers. These are women who bravely came out with accusations against Bill Clinton, but the response to these accusations was to ignore them, with some even implying that Paula Jones was no more than a trailer park prostitute. When Jennifer Flowers spoke of her affair with Bill Clinton, it is reported that Hillary referred to her as trailer trash. This is the same Hillary Clinton who recently said that women who report instances of sexual assault must be heard and believed. Otherwise, these women may feel pressured to keep quiet. It's difficult for me to believe that those who are claiming such concern for women are doing so because they honestly care about women. They try to present themselves as champions of women's rights and say that because a woman makes an accusation, it must be not only considered, but true and any who question whether the accusation is true or not is obviously a woman hater. As a Christian, a pastor, a husband, a father of two daughters, a grandfather of several girls, and a brother of two sisters, I believe in protecting and honoring women. 
God has given us as men that duty, and it is a role that I occupy with utmost sobriety. Still, the fact remains that simply because a woman makes an accusation, it does not follow that the accusation is accurate or true. The fact is, women are human beings, and human beings lie. Women also lie. It isn't only men who are bullies. It isn't only men who assault others. It isn't only men who lie. Women lie, men lie, children lie, human beings lie. And this is one reason we are commanded to tell the truth. We're commanded to tell the truth because it's easier for us to lie. Recently, someone reminded me of the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife recorded in Genesis chapter 39. Joseph had gone into the house to attend to work when the wife of Potiphar said to him, lie with me. Joseph adamantly refused. Finally, she attempted to force herself on him. And instead of yielding to her sexual assault and forceful workplace harassment, he ran from the room, leaving her holding a portion of his garment in her hand. We remember the story. She lied, claimed attempted rape, and he ended up spending time in prison for a crime he did not commit. The fact is, this is not a case of caring for a woman who claimed she was wrong 36 years ago. It's a case of one political party wanting power so much that they will destroy a man's reputation, undermine his marriage, and bring shame to his children because they can't get over the fact that they ran a poorly run campaign and offered a candidate that people could not support and as a result, lost the presidency. We need to pray for our government, pray for the president, and keep our elected officials in prayer daily. We need to exercise our right to vote. And we need to remember that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We need to see that there is a spiritual war that is going on before us for the soul of our nation. And we need to continue making our prayers to the Lord for this nation. And our voices must be heard by our officials. If Judge Kavanaugh was indeed guilty of an offense against the woman making the accusation, my prayer is that it will come to light and the American people can have a complete understanding of what happened. He claims that the accusation is false. I pray that it is. I also seem to remember that our justice system says that a person is presumed innocent until they are proven guilty. Accusations alone do not make someone guilty, but today all is needed to ruin a good person is for them to be a man and a woman to accuse him of something. And this isn't right. This is not just. May we remember that we as a nation should pray for our nation. This is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.